um, brookeboothcoaching.com. I'm going to talk about fighting and anger today. Great topic for those of us who are Mormons in a mixed faith marriage. So if you're anything like me, you were probably raised LDS, and you probably were taught things just like was never appropriate um, because that meant I was angry. And anger was not acceptable. So that meant I grew up basically avoiding all disagreement. And definitely once I was an adult, disagreement was bad because it meant um, there was anger. And anger is a problem, right? Contention is of the devil. It kind of conflated and it kind of got a little bit out of control. So I see this a lot with Mormons. So I don't yell. I don't fight. It's sort of how I was raised and what, what, how I am now programmed, right? My husband is also not a fighter. He's never yelled at me, never been visibly extremely upset. Um, being polite has always been how he responds in our interpersonal relationship, which is great. But there's a little bit of a drawback because I always associated fighting with anger fighting was wrong, anger was bad, all of that, it's really common for us raised LDS to not process our anger, not fully feel and allow some of the more negative emotions such as anger. And I want to talk about that. So, and a lot of times because I think anger is perceived as not being as Christ-like. And let's, let's talk about that. So I would agree that some actions from anger are absolutely never helpful. Like absolutely no upside, no benefit, never helpful, never appropriate. Hitting, name calling, any sort of abusive actions, never appropriate. And a lot of times those stem from anger. But as you'll see below, a lot of times those stem from anger that has been unprocessed and not addressed appropriately. And we'll talk about that. So, I think it's important to consider that anger in and of itself is not always the problem. Everyone gets angry at one point or another. It's normal. It's healthy. It's part of the human experience. It's one of the many emotions we have to experience and to um, have while we're here in these bodies on this earth, right? And a lot of times there are certain situations where we would choose on purpose to feel angry. Maybe abuse, genocide, right? Hurting innocent kittens. Like there might be times when you would genuinely want to be angry. So again, anger isn't always a problem. It's how we deal with it and perceive it. And I want to talk about that. So Anger, or any of these other negative emotions, but I'm going to focus on this one today, it doesn't need to go away or be fixed. It just needs to be processed and allowed. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Because it's unprocessed anger that causes so much pain and anguish. When we don't process our emotions, that's when they explode. Or we numb, like we either explode on our kids, or we numb out on TV or video games or cookies or shopping. Facebook and those that's the problem that's the problem we explode or we numb out or we avoid so not actually allowing yourself to feel angry about something that is painful and something that you want to be upset about is I think the larger problem because when we can actually allow anger and process it and be okay that that is our current experience it's not explosive we don't hurt others. It's, it's not, we don't spew. It's just another emotion that we experience. It's something we feel in our body. We allow it without having to act or react in an angry way. There's a very big difference in feeling angry and letting it be present. And there's a compared to feeling angry and acting or reacting from that anger. There's a very so I think the biggest problem with anger is when we push away, we don't actually experience and allow it and we judge it as a problem. 
you're telling yourself you shouldn't be angry and then you ignore it, that's what's going to cause the problems. Or if you're telling yourself you're a bad person for feeling angry and then starting shame and guilt cycles, that's the problem. Both of these behaviors, they lead to things like passive aggression, stonewalling, volcano, emotions, reactions not commiserate to what just happened, that type of behavior. So I say fighting, and a lot of times when we say fighting, it just really means disagreeing, not seeing things completely on the same page. It's not always bad, and it may not even be a problem. Anger is not always bad, and it may not be a problem. The real problem is unresolved anger unprocessed anger, ignored anger, repressed anger, or where you react from your anger, or really any other emotion. This is what causes so much friction in our relationships and in our mixed faith marriage. So many times these unresolved, unprocessed anger causes us to either explode, or sometimes we get a little snarky, a little sarcastic, these are all the results of unprocessed anger when they leak out and they can cause so much damage. So is this something you resonate with? Do you need to learn how to deal more responsibly with your emotions, how to process them, how to come to accept anger as okay and learn how to respond, to feel anger and still respond in a way where you can like how you're showing up and like how you're interacting with the people you love, it's a hundred percent possible. This is one of the many skills I teach my clients, how to feel emotions and still choose on purpose how you want to act. Our emotions, and if we process them and allow them, then we can choose on purpose how we want to act. If we don't, then we are often at the, at the effect of our emotions. And that's when we do that crazy stuff. That we just come to regret so much in about five minutes after it happens, right? And it can all be avoided. You just can take a minute and allow the anger, not judge it, and not try to fix it, and not feel bad that you're experiencing it. Just let it be. So if you need help with this and really figuring out how to do that, I am here to help. I do this and many other things in my coaching reach out to me at brookeboothcoaching.com and just click on the link, get on a free call. I offer a few each week. You can grab one, not very many, but there's a few, grab one and let's talk. Let's talk and see if coaching can help you become the person you wanna be in your marriage so your marriage can be the type of mixed faith marriage you want it to be. It can be, it really can. You can get a handle on these things just a few tools. All right, reach out to me or you can always just message me here on Facebook if that's easier. All right, wishing you the best.